Hello. Hello. How are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you doing? Good. Um, I'm Erin Merrill. I'm a student engagement librarian here at Westminster. I'm also um, the staff council chair. And I'm super excited to be part of Westminster's um, One Westminster Day today. And it looks like we're almost at 500 gifts. So feeling good. Yay. Um, my name is Teresa Gonzalez. Um, I'm a junior here at Westminster and I study business. Business. So you're a junior. So um, how are you feeling about this year? It's been a weird year. How does it compare to previous years? It's definitely different doing like online classes, but I would still say that I am enjoying being here at Westminster, so. Well, good. We're, we're definitely glad you're here. <laughs> I think in just a moment, we will be having our first guest, uh, Julie Bach. Well, for us, I know we've had a lot of guests through the day so far, uh, but I think she'll be joining us in just a moment. Uh, do you have classes going on today? Um, not today, but um, tomorrow. <laughs> okay, e easy class load day. Perfect. Well, it looks like we're ready to go ahead and add Julie. So should we give her a warm welcome and bring her on in? <laughs> Hi, everybody. Julie. Hi, Hi Teresa. <laughs> Hello. So happy so to have you. We had class this morning at eight. So <laughs> you can be happy to have a day off of class. <laughs> oh, definitely. Do you have any uh, friends, Teresa, in the nursing program? Unfortunately, I don't. So I think me and Julie will have to be friends now. So <laughs> that will be great. So, Julie, um, what is a nurse practitioner kit? So I'll tell you a little bit actually background about what nurse practitioners are because some of our viewers may not even see that or know that. So um, undergrad nurses under study a baccalaureate, get, obtain a baccalaureate degree in nursing and then nurse practitioners go on to get advanced education and training. And that includes here at Westminster a master's degree and then it prepares them to be independent providers. So when we used to think of going to, oh, I'm gonna go to my family physician or my family doctor, it very well may be a family nurse practitioner. So part of their education in the beginning is they learn advanced health assessment skills. So as a nurse, you do a lot of assessments, but when you're an independent provider, you have additional education and training. So our FNP kits are something that we use for our students in their very first semester of their FNP program. And it allows them to get that hands-on looking in ears, seeing if that kiddo has an ear infection, right? Looking in eyes, seeing if there's anything we worry about. So we have kits here at the school that we give all of our students to practice with. But what happened with COVID is we used to rotate those kits so that students would check them out and then bring them back and we'd rotate them through for those practice sessions. But when COVID hit, just like all the many unintended implications um, due to infection control issues, we couldn't easily transfer those kits from students to students. And that's when I thought, boy, this is a great opportunity to provide every one of our first year students a kit to keep through their entire first year so that they can practice when they want and they don't have to juggle trying to share it with another student. That's awesome. What What's all included in the kit? Like what types of tools are in there and um, that allows them to do some of this practice? I just happen to have some of those. Ooh. So certainly our most expensive item, I should little, I have a little example here, but it's called an otoophthalmoscope. So kind of a long word, but essentially it is the, um, the piece of um, equipment that our students have to use 
to be able to look inside the eye. So not just look at the eye right from here, but we actually use this equipment, sorry, that allows us to look actually in the eye structures inside. And then it also has an attachment where we look at ears. So if you think of going to your family provider and saying, oh, do I have an ear infection or not? The otoophthalmoscope allows us to be able to make those diagnostic um, decisions. So unfortunately, the, the good, solid, well-made otoophthalmoscopes cost over $500 each. Um, so that's certainly the most expensive. Then we have other items, which you've certainly seen before, simple things like a reflex hammer and tuning forks, right? Make sure that your hearing's normal. Make sure that your sensation is normal. And then we also, let me find it, we have other items that measure how far you can bend joints. So when somebody says, oh, I took a day off and went snowboarding or skiing and I think I hurt my knee, we actually have measures, um, uh, equipment that measures that angle. So lots of important new equipment for those um, FNP students to make that transition from being a, a registered nurse that works maybe in a hospital to having, right, utens um, instruments for their own practice. That's pretty amazing. I, I didn't uh, even think about how the sharing would cause some issues. And so the fact that they'll each be able to have their own, not only, you know, reduces the risks with COVID, but also gives them more opportunities to practice because um, they're not sharing that tool. So that's really exciting that we're going to be able to get that for all of your students, hopefully. Yes. Um, so I just wanted to ask, um, what do you think is unique about the nursing, about nursing education from Westminster? So I have to tell you first, Teresa, I'm biased because I received my undergraduate nursing degree from Westminster woo -woo, many, many years ago. I've um, had one son graduate, one son who maybe you can meet on campus, who's attending now. Um, but I do, I know you hear a lot about a unique environment for learning, but I have to tell you, it truly is a unique environment for learning. We're committed first to our students, meeting their needs, meeting them where they are, and really that individualized in, you know, instruction. I just had a student, I taught this morning, I had a student come up and say, you know, I gotta tell you, I can't speak more positive about Westminster and especially the response during COVID because that was a game changer. And she said, I do it all over again. And when I have a second year student looking at graduation within eight weeks to say they do it all over again, <laughs> that's a win because they're tired. <laughs> Yeah, um, your FNP students are extremely busy. Uh, what's like a, a typical week or schedule for some of your FNP students? So we have a, made our program created to support um, working individuals. So since you have to be a nurse before you come back to nurse practitioner school, those all of our students work as an RN at the same time. So we create classes in blocks. So we teach either all day Tuesday or all day Wednesday so that it gives them ability to, on another day or two, spend time in clinical learning their new role or also spend time at their regular registered nurse job. So they are extremely busy. That's why, Teresa, you don't see even the undergrad nursing around. We're usually busy during clinical or class, but our program is designed to support those individuals so they can continue to address the other 
multiple um, commitments they have in their life at, while at the same time getting a graduate degree and expanding their career. That's really great. Um, I mean, you mentioned a little bit that they're already registered nurses. So have they all been able to get uh, the coronavirus vaccine? And like, how have they been impacted by the, the pandemic? Yeah, so we, it took a lot of work, but we have been um, very conscientious uh, about keeping mm -hmm. our students able to meet the responsibilities of their jobs because it has had a huge impact on that side of their life. For example, one of the students this morning said, we just got MOCs canceled. And I'm like, what's an MOC? And she said, mandatory on-call shift. Because all those nurses, when the hospital census surged, they suddenly had to work more, not less. So we have, through a lot of support of administration and our Dean, Cheryl Stedman, we have been able to maintain in-person classes through this time because A, taking the necessary precautions, right? We wear masks and social distance, um, but they have all at this point received both doses. So at this point, all of our students in this program are immunized because they were eligible as first responders taking care. Yeah, so we're, we are so lucky and so fortunate. Well, that's what I was hoping to hear. I was hoping that they've all gotten it. I, um, you know, since they're out there, they're working, they're doing the hard stuff. We'd really hope that they have that protection. So um, yay, so much yay. That's the best news. Um, I had a great question and now I'm like so <laughs> like excited that I can't even think about my question because I, I, I just can't even believe this. Um, with the assessment kits though, uh, how many students do you have in the program? How many are you hoping to obtain? How can donors really help us meet that goal? So thank you for asking that. I, I think one of the um, important things to note is we continue to have um, so many people who want to come to the FNP program, right? We always have lots more applicants than we do um, spots available. So we are looking back when I first started teaching at Westminster, we had about eight to 10 in the program. Now we have 24 and this next year we're going to have 28. So our goal is to get 28 kits and the entire kit, right, costs $550, which I know is a significant amount of money. So I think my message would be buy a tuning fork because we can put the tuning fork with, right, with the auto ophthalmoscope and be able to create a kit. So I don't want anybody to think that they have to provide an entire kit. They can provide a piece of a kit and we will put it all together and make it whole. Yes, definitely, everything helps. <laughs> and people can do that right now on the Giving Westminster website by uh, selecting your program as your chosen donor. And so uh, kind of like you're saying, it doesn't have to be the full amount. Any donation that you provide will go towards um, helping create these assessment kits. I love how you say like, it can be just a tuning fork. It doesn't have to be the whole thing. That's fun. Yeah. When students are, are using the assessment kits, uh, you notice, um, you mentioned how they're really using it to practice. Are they practicing like on their friends and family? Mm -hmm. Are they practicing with um, like in the areas that they're working in their clinicals? Where do the assessment kits get used? All of the above. So <laughs> certainly we warn the students their first couple weeks of school, like tell the person you live with, sorry, they're going to be <laughs> a real life model. Um, so they certainly do use their friends and family as perspective, right? Practice patients. Um, we also, I love our program. We have students in rural areas, right? To help meet the underserved needs of um, our populations that don't have easy access to healthcare. So next week, I'll be going to Bicknell, Utah, 
to see two students who we've placed there and the kids actually provide them an opportunity to take to the rural setting as well because not all of those healthcare facilities have this equipment on a wall because maybe they can't afford it. So the providers that are there have their own kids, but this will also allow our students to take their kids with them. And, and again, we have a focus on meeting the needs of people that live in Utah, whether that be in the middle of Salt Lake City or in a small you know, rural town. Okay, that's amazing. I think we need to pause right there and recognize that these kids aren't just like helping our students, which of course they are, but it's also helping our local community, um, helping people get treatment. And um, as you mentioned, it's going to a lot of rural areas where they might not even have the, the funding for it, um, which I didn't know. I didn't realize that it was like had this larger community connection. And I think that's really, really amazing. It is certainly one way that we help to give back to our community at large. So yes, it has, this will have a huge impact in a multiple, you know, different ways. Um, so I know the goal for the program is 75 donations and we're currently at 33 right now. So that is awesome. Yeah, we're like, what, two hours into giving day and you're already over a third of the way there. So um, if you're listening right now, though, let's keep it coming. We don't have to stop there. We won't stop there. So let, let's reach that goal of 75 donations. You've got the little link right there. Pick the FNP program. We'd love to help them hit that goal. And I have to say, I'm going to reach out because I probably have... I don't know, hundreds, I can tell you more than a hundred um, students that I have taught through all these years. So again, I ask you to give back. I know you're out in your careers and being independent providers and contributing in that way, but I would ask you to give back to Westminster. So if, if you ever had to survive through my advanced health assessment class, Right. Remember that day when you were so nervous the first time you were looking in an ear and let's pay it forward and make that happen for our students that are here now. Aside from your students, is there any message you would want, like the general community or um, anyone outside of your various nursing programs uh, to know? Wow. Okay. I warned you, Erin. Don't give me hard questions. Erin comes and helps our master's students as they're getting ready for their master's project. <laughs> and she is a big thinker. So I'm like, okay, Erin, no hard questions. I know you, you create those hard questions. <laughs> so I don't think so. Other than, again, it, it, it's an important contribution. It has far reaching impact even more than you realize at face value. Um, Westminster changed my life from a very young age of an 18 year old coming to college. And I have been continued to be grateful for that impact. So again, I just encourage you dig down, look at what from our, for our alum, what Westminster has given to you and it's time to give back as even as small as that needs to be please give back. Um, already as like being a junior here at Westminster, I just have to agree with you, Julie, and like already feeling like Westminster has changed my life significantly in the best way possible. And so I, I encourage everybody to give back to Westminster and stand together for Westminster. Yeah. <laughs> Go Griffins. Yeah. Julie, I would actually like to know a little bit more about um, like what your faculty are doing right now to help support uh, your family nurse practitioner students and how's it been on the faculty end this past year and um, just a little bit more about the work that you guys are doing as, as a faculty. Okay, so our faculty, I, I can't say enough about my peers that I work with, again, um, digging in when we needed to dig in hard. All of our faculty in the FNP program also maintain 
a one day a week outside practice so that we can maintain, you know, stay current in treatment. And so at the same time, we were trying to pivot our instructional design for our students, support our students who were working all those extra mandatory on-call overtime shifts. Um, as a faculty, we were also trying to juggle our own practices, A, making sure we were meeting our patients' needs, but then also pivoting our practices to perhaps telehealth where we had never, like in my personal practice, I had never done telehealth before. I've been a nurse practitioner for 27 years. So trying to add that on, the additional skill set of how do I manage a patient I've taken care of for 15 years now through video technology, there were a lot of pressures on our faculty. The other thing that happened with COVID is because of the worry, especially in the beginning and not having enough of that personal protective gear that you heard about in the very beginning, like we're, we're getting shipments here in the mm -hmm. States to make sure we don't run out of masks and gloves and gowns. Well, uh, most of our students um, were pulled from their clinical settings for both protection for the student as well as protection to the overall healthcare system um, so that we didn't use two gowns taking care of a patient when we could use one. So there were so many layers and I just can't speak to my coworkers enough to really, we had to get very creative. We had some alumni who worked in practices that said, okay, Julie, I know I used to take a student one day a week, but we had faculty juggling those preceptorships where it's like, okay, we'll let your student come for an immersion experience of 40 hours one week, and then they can use their same mask for that week. They're not having to throw one away every day. And so just the creativity and, and commitment, because our faculty were trying to meet the needs of our students, mm -hmm. our new instructional design, as well as managing our own patients in our clinic where we had to learn a new skill set very quickly. It's amazing, honestly, how much you all do. Um, you know, I feel sometimes the stress working in a pandemic and I'm in this cozy little library office. I don't have to interact with everyone so much. And so just like you said, there's so many layers to everything that you do. And so I think more than ever, now is a great time for the Westminster community and um, you know the local community to really come together and give you guys the support because this past year you guys have really come together for us as a community, like truly. Um, I like I really can't say enough of how much you guys are doing, and I think a, a lot of us are grateful for the work that you do. So it's inspiring to hear about, and I appreciate you letting me ask because it's amazing. Yeah. It has been an amazing year and we've come out stronger for it, better prepared. Yeah, and um, just thinking about your students and how they're kind of undergoing this training in like such an unprecedented, unprecedented time, uh, how do you feel like they are gonna be better prepared uh, because of the pandemic and because of all of this wild things that have been happening this past year, do you think this will better prepare them? I, I think it has been a huge challenge and absolutely I can say they're going to be better prepared for a couple of reasons. One, flexibility. They have had to be so flexible and they've had to be so nimble with, okay, these are the new rules this week. So a credit to our current students uh, they have they have met that with open arms. The other thing is what I look for in new graduates and again getting an education at Westminster is we teach our students to meet the upcoming problems, right? Like like the the information I'm giving them is to help them navigate the current healthcare system. What we're teaching our students is, to pr bring innovation to healthcare and find a better way of doing it than I've done it for my career. 
And I think our students have risen to that to say, hey, I can do anything. If I got through graduate school and continued to work and had to homeschool my child during this whole thing, and I'm graduating on time, and I'm telling my coworker, you need to go to Westminster, that's a plus. Our, our students are going to be well prepared to not just meet the demands, but innovate those, right? Innovate healthcare, change it, make it better for the people who, right? We think of underserved communities like, oh, go to, go to Bicknell or go to Montezuma Creek. But you know what? There's underserved communities right here in Salt Lake City, right? A single parent who can't get time off work to take their sick kiddo to a family nurse practitioner. Well, you know what? We now have helped our students learn that innovation, the telemedicine to say, even though your zip code is right in the middle of Salt Lake City, you are underserved because you couldn't access healthcare before. And now we've taught our students how to open that access. So I'm excited. It was painful, <laughs> but I have to tell you, I'm excited. Yeah, I think how true the the phrase, what doesn't kill us makes us stronger rings this this past year, right? And I will be stoked to, to be treated by a family nurse practitioner student in the Westminster program, just having seen it. And I would feel totally confident and better than ever knowing they did it in such a hard time. So, so cool. Thank you. Yeah, it's honestly, it's truly amazing, like how students just have had to adapt to this. And I think it was so awesome that you like brought up that a lot of them, you know, um, are trying to work, go to school, graduate on time and, you know, take care of their family. And I think it really shows like how strong everyone has come out of this so yeah and i get emails from lots of various nursing students like at 11 59 p.m at night they're working on their homework i know that they're constantly burning that midnight oil um really putting in the necessary work not just to like get through this time but so do so successfully so that they can be prepared and smart and i i know because they uh they message me all the time trying to find the, the right solutions for their patients. And um, yeah, they are the hardest workers. And so it's exciting to see that we have the opportunity to support them. Um, just like Maggie Regeer saying, where would we be without our amazing nurses? So true. I can tell you nowhere good, at least on my end. So. I have to tell you, Erin, it's funny because we always talk about the big joke of like, oh, the nursing students put their assignments in, right? 10.59, 11.59, 2.40. During the rapid pivot with COVID, you know, about one year ago right now, a student sent me an email back and said, hey, I noticed your email about clinical placements went out at 4.40 this morning. That's a student time, not a faculty. And, and I just smiled because I thought that is that mentoring collegial relationship. Even though it is a, a faculty student, it's more about a mentoring relationship. So not only do I try to help our students navigate, they're well aware of the contribution Westminster gives back to them. Absolutely. Well, uh, we're about out of time, so we just want to put in one last pitch for your program. We're trying to reach 75 donation. Every, every single bit helps. Um, you, you've got the link right there up on your screen, giving.westminstercollege.edu. Make sure that you select um, the FNP's program and help uh, develop these assessment kits that aren't just going to benefit our students, but our community. All right. Well, thank you so much, Erin. Teresa, I want to see you on campus someday. It's, it was very nice to meet you here. Come yeah, on over to the, so yeah, come on over to the right Health and Wellness Center and third floor. And I'd love to meet you in person at, in, in addition to virtually. 
Yeah, absolutely. You know, I don't think I've ever even been um, in the building before, so that'll be a great reason for me to go in there and check it out. So I would love that. So one more time, please help us meet our goals. 75 donations. Every little bit counts. I just appreciate everyone and your support. Well, thanks so much, Julie. It was a pleasure talking with you this morning. Um, next up, we'll have some videos to share featuring the visual arts from around Westminster. And we'll see you back here at 11 a.m. with our next, our next guest, Kim Zarkin. Um, so let's go ahead um, and we'll get those videos rolling and we'll see you in about 30 minutes.